My hollow ground slicing knife that is 30 years old needed a very fancy leather edge guard. The beauty of saddle leather is as it ages, a patina develops that tells the story of where the knife has been. This video shows how to make an edge guard for a 12 inch slicing knife with a line 20 snap latch made out of a high quality vegetable tan saddle leather. The design was drawn in the computer including all the construction jigs and took the better part of three days for me to complete. The critical steps, materials and tools are identified in the titles and broken down further in the video. Draw the actual knife and draw the edge guard design over top of it. Draw in all of the details like gluing, stitching, molded parts, hardware and colors too. Eighth of an inch acrylic is less expensive than high quality saddle leather so printing acrylic marking, cutting and glue up jigs helps to limit the risk of wasting leather and the acrylic templates can be used repeatedly if properly taken care of. Remove the protective coating if you use clear acrylic and use fine grit sandpaper to remove any sharp edges. Hobby knives with disposable blades come in handy and it is a good idea to change the blades out often and use a set of pliers to take them in and out of the holder. I tied a Turk's head knot on the end of the holder with 5mm kangaroo lace for a more comfortable grip. Use spring clamps to lightly fasten the cutout template on top of the leather so it does not move. Vegetable tanned leather is very unforgiving and easy to crease or mark, so you do not want to use screw type clamps that put too much force in a small area. Cut out the leather part by dragging your knife along the edge of the acrylic template. Circles can be tricky to cut out uniformly without a good method or tool. An adjustable compass knife is a good tool to use to create larger circles. The end of one point is stuck into the center radius of the leather and the knife is spun around the radius to create a circle so a small tool mark in the center will remain. The exact same shape can be cut around a circle template too. The result is pretty much the same. The same template is used to cut the inside of the strap but will be trimmed at the center to accommodate the smaller curve radius and another piece of wear leather is sewn over top to make the strap very strong and add a decorative detail highlighted with a different color. The strap has the top of the snap sewn into the leather so a one inch circle acts as a raised liner and adds two millimeters to give enough thickness to the leather to set the snap in place. Use the template to cut out the outside shape of the gusset as well as mark and cut out the center of the gusset. I drew my edge guard design with a 13 millimeter or half inch gusset with an allowance of 3 or 4 millimeter top and bottom blade clearance. Using vegetable tan saddle leather to cover the edge of a knife to protect it and make it easier to carry has literally been done for thousands of years. Leather is a natural material that can be bent and shaped when it is wet and left to dry can hold its shape. When you make a wet mold, offset the positive shape an eighth of an inch for the leather to pass through or the mold can stretch the leather too thin or tear it. Soak the leather in room temperature water for about 10 minutes. Because the 3 to 4 ounce leather is not very thick, less than 3 millimeters or an eighth of an inch, it does not take very long to become flexible. But if I was using thick saddle skirting, I would soak the leather for a lot longer. Even though I sprayed this mold with a protective lacquer, I do not like to get the mold wet and use plastic wrap as a moisture barrier on the top and bottom before I squeeze the leather into the mold, using C-clamps against the edge of my bench. Leave the leather in the mold for about half an hour. You can leave the leather in the mold longer, but I release the pressure from the clamps and remove the mold so the leather has a better chance to dry out. The leather will shrink as it dries out as well, so wait until the leather dries before cutting or stamping it further to make your leather parts more accurate. Large arch punches need more force placed upon them to cut through the leather, so a heavy leather worker's hammer makes it easier, and a punch board that can withstand the heavier blows is needed too. Use a tool guide to center the raised leather dimple and hit the one and a quarter inch arch punch with a heavy hammer. The tool guide establishes the edge of the leather so there is enough leather to sew through, so choose a punch size half an inch larger than the opening so the seam has at least an eighth of an inch on either side. I save the cutouts when I clean my hole punches, they make great spacers and washers. 
To line the dimple, glue half inch circles into the hole until it is filled flush with the collar. Glue can make a mess, so use a small container and the appropriate applicator. Small tweezers are helpful, and pressing the circles down to the bottom with a smoothing tool will help create a stronger bond. To create the punch through raised and lined dimple effect, use a marking template and a scratch all to mark the 3 quarter inch circle that is to be punched. Line up the circle with an arch punch and hit the top of the tool with a heavy maul. Use dividers to mark a 3 millimeter or an eighth of an inch border for the stitching chisels to follow along, which is the first step in the creation of a seam. Top quality stitching chisels, hammers or mallets and punch pads are a good investment for a leather crafter that likes to sew by hand because they will be used a lot. The prongs on the chisels follow a straight line so the two prong chisel is used for curved stitching lines and the multi prong chisels are used for straight lines. The last hole punched is used to guide the tool and when I use a nine prong chisel I go back a few holes to make the line true. Don't stitch mark the reverse shape to be stitched unless you are using the reverse angle chisels or the diamond shaped holes will be in the opposite direction making it more difficult to sew properly. So the reverse holes are punched through the stitch mark top after the pieces are glued together. The pieces of leather that are not sewn together on their edge need to be finished before they are attached to a flat area because that will be the last time you will be able to get at the edges. So use a small edge beveler to round over the corner which makes the edge of the leather easier to burnish and paint after the leather has been dyed. This is how to apply charcoal black solvent dye using a small sponge. It is a good idea to use rubber gloves and have a disposable cardboard work surface when you are working with dyes because dye stains can be difficult to wash off. Use a small container and work with a small amount of dye instead of a massive bottle that can drip dye everywhere and refill as needed. Apply a few coats generously and allow to dry. For larger pieces of leather, spraying the dye is the easiest and fastest way to achieve an even solid color. It is best to spray in a well ventilated area or outside. My spray chamber is a simple cardboard box with a bit of the side and top cut off and a wire baking rack on the bottom which I placed on the table just outside my shop door. Not that there is much difference between small hobby airbrushes, but I use a siphon gun instead of a gravity fed gun, and one of the main differences is where the bottle rests. As the air is forced through this gun, the dye is pulled into the stream with negative air pressure, which is also known as a bottom fed siphon. It takes a few minutes for the siphon to start, so I use a collection pot to collect the spitting dye before the dye forms a steady stream. When you spray one color, adjust the opening for a wide stream of dye to cover a greater area. Put the leather you are going to spray on a sheet of paper. When you use the same drop sheets for different colors, those colors can transfer to your finished project, so be careful not to contaminate your workspace. When you are ready to spray, hold the nozzle back a bit and go over the same area several times as the dye soaks into the leather. Solvent dyes sprayed this way dry quickly, so it is easy to see where more dye is needed. Depending on the dye you use, several coats might be needed. Gum tragicanth is a plant-based gum that is used to help slick the edge surface during burnishing and is easy to apply to the edges of the leather with a small sponge. Slicker is a tool used to burnish the leather edge and they come with different sized grooves. The surface of the leather edge needs to be smooth so the edge finishing paint will be easy to apply and dry smooth too. Burnishing and painting the edges are important steps to ensure the layers of fibers in the leather will not fray as easily. A skivy knife is similar to a woodworker's plane because they are both used to shave off a strip of material until the desired shape is achieved. When you use a leather strop, you want to spread a generous layer of polishing compound on the leather and drag the blade over top to get a mirror finish. A strop works in a similar way to a butcher's steel. It removes the burr off the end of the blade, restoring a sharp edge. Skiving leather is usually done to remove the excess leather around the edges to make sewing multiple layers together easier. When skiving you want to remove a strip of leather without disturbing the natural edge so the knife is used at an angle to shave the flesh side on the back. 
The strength is in the top smooth side of the leather, so skiving the back sides will not affect the strength of the edge guard, but it will improve the look and function with a sunken seam after the pieces are glued and stitched together. After you use your knife to remove the bulk of the leather, you can use sandpaper or sanding sticks of various grits to smooth out the leather or you can continue to add texture depending on how aggressive your sanding is. Edge paint is a liquid based coating designed to soak into the raw leather and creates a flexible coating to make the leather edges a little bit more durable. A leather edge paint roller is an applicator and finishing tool designed to make the edge painting process a little easier. The edge paint is permanent, so apply carefully so you do not get any on the top finished surface of the leather. Use plastic risers to let the opposite edge dry too. Apply the glue evenly and allow the glue room to expand. You do not want the glue to spill out, so remove excess glue before clamping. The acrylic pattern pieces work great as a glue up jig. Shop made jigs are very useful and make this project easy to reproduce. Small plastic spring clamps add plenty of pressure and the acrylic helps protect the surface of the leather from getting marked up by the clamps as the glue sets. I use John James size number 4 harness needles when I use 0.6 millimeter thread. Needles can easily go missing so a pin cushion is a good idea. Bonded nylon thread is strong and easy to saddle stitch leather with because the fibers are tight and more resistant to a needle snagging it. Ritza Tiger Thread is a popular brand and the color used here is beige. Threading a needle can be difficult but with a clean flat end and a little patience it gets easy after you do it a few times. After the needle is threaded, pass the needle through the end of the thread twice and pull the end of the thread tight so the needle does not come off. A stitching pony is a type of clamp used to hold the leather in place as you stitch so it is like an extra set of hands. The saddle stitch is my favorite stitch because it is very useful. Use a stitching awl to punch through two stitch marked holes side by side and pass the thread through from the back. Pull the closest needle through the back hole and pull the thread so there is the same amount of thread on each side. Then going one stitch forward doubles the stitch to lock it in place so you can finish stitching the row. When you push the awl through, careful not to poke your finger on the other side and have your needle ready to pass through to make it easier to find the hole. Finish the row of stitching with a half back stitch over the stitch you started from and tie the ends off with a square knot. Small pliers are handy to help grab the needle and pull the needle through the hole, especially when the needle and thread are pulled through the same hole several times. The remaining thread is to be cut off with a pair of scissors or burnt off with a USB lighter or a thread zapper. Leather pliers are used to clamp down on the seam to help embed the stitches into the leather. It takes time to make proper construction jigs and usually made for production work, but if you want a high level of accuracy in all of your custom projects, Incorporating the construction jigs into your design is the only way it can be done successfully the first time too. The shape of the raised and lined decoration makes it almost impossible to glue properly without a jig. A line 20 snap is a type of closure that mounts a post on one side and a cap on the other that fit together tight enough that they require force to separate them. You need to punch small holes in leather to mount the hardware and the 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter is the size I use for snaps and rivets I buy. Rivets and snaps need to be set into the right thickness of leather so small pieces of leather are used in between the layers to make up the difference needed. The inside layer of leather is called the liner and the strap latch needs to be able to open and close without the leather bunching up in the middle because of a smaller radius when closed and a larger radius when the latch is open which can be over stretching the leather. So cut the liner in half to remove about a quarter of an inch. An extra piece of wear leather can be stitched onto the inside bend to strengthen the bend and give the strap a little bit more movement without cracking the leather too. Glue the interior leather around the snap posts and allow to dry for a few minutes. You can use a line 20 setting set with a hammer or use a hand press with line 20 snap dies. 
since the snap is in two pieces, two pairs of dies are needed. The dies are easy to install but need to be tightened with a bolt to hold them in place as you apply pressure to their surface. Sandwich the leather and snap between the dies so the snap is in the middle and press down on the handle to crimp down the metal and permanently attach the snap to the leather. Switch out the dies and do the next pair. Instead of having the surface of the metal snap showing on the outside of the latch, the top piece of leather is sewn over top. Test to make sure the snap latch works before going through the trouble of sewing the latch together. If the snap doesn't set properly, you can cut the snap off with rivet cutting pliers and set another one that works the way it should. When you glue the parts in place, use weights and finger pressure to help the glue create a strong bond. Handheld plier type hole punches have the advantage of having the punch pad built in. A rotary leather punch offers an assortment of sizes and is perfect for punching smaller sized holes and lighter weight leathers. After gluing and stitching the belt loop in place, punch the holes through. You can set the rivets with a manual rivet setter and a hammer, but a hand press is faster when you are setting lots of them. Add the dies to the hand press and tighten the bolts to hold them in place. Snap extra small double cap rivets into the punched holes. These very small rivets are used to reinforce the belt loop, but they can also be decorative. Center the rivet between the two dies and pull the handle down to apply pressure and set the rivet. The details are important, so shop made jigs allow your designs to be taken to the next level of control. The latch is the only moving part on the edge guard and the shape of the latch is glued on a curve to make a stronger latch that holds its shape. The advantage of using an awl is that you can stitch in any position if there is enough room to pull the needles through. When you glue leather into a shape, wood or plastic lasts are useful tools too. A small dowel smooths the leather and creates a small uniform half circle, the normal curve of the latch when it is fastened. The removal of the blade is the only time the shape of the latch is pulled straight, so it will naturally go back into the shape above the snap post. Each stitch takes me about 15 seconds, so at 5 stitches per inch, I will be lucky to get this latch sewn within 10 minutes. So hand stitching is time consuming, but it is also the best stitch you can get because the thread is passed through each side. In comparison to a saddle stitch, a machine uses a lock stitch, which uses two separate threads twisted together under pressure, so when a machine stitch breaks, it unravels quickly. Therefore, there is a reason why people will pay extra for hand-stitched leather goods. Paint the inside of the edge guard with an acrylic coating to help seal the inside flesh side of the leather. Tan coat is meant to be applied to smooth leather, but I find it works on the flesh side of the leather too. Avoid the area that will be glued to get a better bond when gluing and allow to dry completely. Apply the glue generously to both sides being glued, but not to the point where it will spill out everywhere when you clamp the sides together. You can glue the gusset to both sides all at once, but on a larger edge guard I prefer to glue one side at a time because the gusset moves around too much. When you remove the acrylic glue up jig, it is likely there will be glue in places you do not want it to be, so a rubber eraser might help. Gently rub the eraser against the glue spill until it comes off. Don't try to wash the glue off with water, that will create a larger stain. It is better to let the glue flake off the surface as the leather is used. Stitching chisels are not really meant to be driven through thick layers of leather because it is difficult to drive them straight. So the deeper the hole, the greater the chance the chisel heading off course. This edge guard has a sunken seam, so the holes need to be punched on the end of a square punch pad with a sharp corner. Use a leather punch pad to protect the tip of your chisel and hold the chisel at a perpendicular 90 degree angle with a firm grip. Tap the top of the chisel a few times just until the chisel goes into the leather punch pad. A back stitch locks the thread in place and a triple back stitch adds a little more strength. 
especially when the stitches are at an opening or when the stitches are holding together areas of higher wear. When you backstitch, the stitching hole becomes tight because of the extra thread and it also makes it easier to snag the thread on the way through. If this happens, you have to cut the snag out before continuing. An awl is a good tool to use when backstitching to open up the hole a little bit and clear a path for the needle to pass through to avoid snagging. A good habit to get into is when you put the needle in the hole, pull the thread in both directions to discover a snag before you pull the needle through the snag thread and have to cut it out. Vegetable tanned leather can be sanded smooth. Nail files and small sanding sticks are good tools to remove the remaining bits of excess leather and bits of glue that was squeezed out during glue up. When the edges are finished and dry, the conditioner can be applied. Thebans makes a leather conditioner called Aussie and it is a mixture of wax and oil. This type of leather conditioner is similar to a woodworker's finishing wax. When the oil penetrates into the leather, a small amount of wax will remain on the surface. Apply a small amount of conditioner and gently rub into the leather and wipe off excess. After the conditioner is applied, the edge guard is ready to use. The snap is the perfect size for this application, but when someone is taking the knife in and out of the edge guard, pull the latch backwards to avoid the knife cutting into it. The decorative raised dimples creates a good grip to pass the knife safely to someone else. The stitching awl is an essential tool that needs to be very sharp or the stitching holes will be difficult to punch through. To sharpen a diamond shaped awl, use a fine grit whetstone and rub the side facets against the stone evenly to polish the surface. The tip is the most important part of the awl and needs to be very sharp or you will be working a lot harder than you need to. The tip is very small so it does not take very long to sharpen the edge. Drag the tip of the awl against the stone as you pivot in a rounding motion to make the tip of the awl into a rounded spear shape. When you feel the burr forming on the tip, continue to polish the awl with a strop. There should be no resistance as the awl passes through the leather.